to dedicate this song to all the mothers in this house, including our Pastor C. And you are all special in God's eyes, and may God bless you this special day. Amen. My love 
love for you because I'm so in love and I'm so inspired by you my Lord my King Lord I live to Thank you, Amen. Sweet mother, I no go forget you. For this so far away, you so far for me, yeah. Sweet mother, I no go forget you. For this so far away, you so far for me. If I no chop, my mother no go chop. If I no sleep, my mother no go sleep. She no dey tired, sweet mother. I no go forget this suffer when you suffer for me, yeah. Sweet mother, sweet mother, oh, hey, oh. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. You know they tired, sweet mother. I don't forget this suffer when you suffer for me, yeah. Sweet mother, I don't forget this suffer when you suffer for me, yeah. Sweet mother, sweet mother, oh, yeah. When I don't sleep, my mother don't go sleep. If I don't chop. She know they tired, sweet mother. I don't forget this suffer when you suffer for me, yeah. Sweet mother, sweet mother, oh, yeah. Why up? Dance now, mother. Hey. Come on, shake your body to hey. the Lord. She not a tired, sweet mother. I don't go forget this suffer when you suffer for me, yeah. Sweet mother, sweet mother, oh, hey, oh. Come on, put Yes, hallelujah. A class of seven-year-olds were asked a question to write down why God made mothers. The list is long. I'll share two of them with you. One of them wrote, because they know where the cello tape is. <laughs> that is in the mind of a seven-year-old. I love my mom because, you know, anytime I'm looking for the cello tape, she knows. That is why God made them. The other one said, God made mothers so that they will help us out when we were being born. <laughs> and then the next question was, if there is anything you could change about your mom, what would you ask God to change? He says, I wish one of them wrote, says, I wish the two, it seems that my mom has two eyes at the back of her head. <laughs> I wish that God would take those two eyes away from the back of my mom's head. She seems to see anything, everything that's going on around. That is mother's for you, Amen. Today, I want to talk about on the subject, the value of motherhood. Sometimes we take mothers and motherhood for granted. But today, I want you to go away understanding that the mother's value are of so much worth and of so much value. And not just that, to also look at what we are meant to do as mothers. Our focal verse is Titus 
chapter 2, turn to Titus chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. Titus 2, 1 to 5. Our focal verse is in verse 4. Now I read. But as for you, speak the things that are proper for sound doctrine, that the older mothers, older men be sober, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. The older women likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderous, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands and to love their children. Five, to be discreet, chaste homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. This admonition is to men and then also to women, older women, to teach these things to younger women, that they will, one, love their husbands, two, love their children, three, to be discreet, to be wise, to be chaste, to be homemakers, to be good, to be obedient to their own husbands. And the reason why we are admonished to do this, so that God's word will not be blasphemed. It is important, isn't it, that in scripture, there is a verse that is set here to say, older mothers teach the younger women to love their husbands and to love children. You know, today we are not talking so much about loving our husbands because it's Mother's Day. So we'll be focusing so much more on how we love our children. We salute, I stand on behalf of the women and I salute all men here today. Amen. But I stand here on behalf of all the ladies to salute our fathers, to salute all the men here. We, we honor you. And, you know, when you look at that word, older mothers, sometimes we look at it and we think it's only about age only. It's not just about age. It's about that word in Greek also means a, a spiritual maturity, someone who is spiritually mature, women who are spiritually mature, women who have experience in these things. And so the word of God admonishes us this morning that we mothers should teach other mothers to love their children. Today, so we salute mothers and honor mothers. We honor grandmothers. We honor aunts. We honor mothers-in-law. We honor our aunties. We honor mentors. We honor every woman that is seated here. And I said in the first service that, you know, you don't have to start having children before you become a mother. You are a mother the first day you land on the earth and the nurse announces a girl is born. Because in every girl is a mother. And so this morning, you don't have to be a mother to, to enjoy this day and to celebrate this day and to take all the lessons we need to take from this day. If you are a waiting mother, waiting for the fruit of the womb, I'm telling you, you are still a mother because God has placed in you already everything that it takes to be a mother. And so we are just praying with you and standing with you that in this year, God himself will hear the prayers that you pray. If you are a young woman, a youth, young adult, you are still a mother. Because our daughters today are tomorrow's mothers. Amen. Amen. So Paul admonishes us that we will do this. And as we do that, he says it in verse 5. He says that so that the word of God may not be blasphemed. So it means that it is easy for the word of God to be blasphemed. Even among us as Christians, not understanding what God expects of us as families. And so if, as we teach it. We help people to fully understand God's word concerning what he has said about families so that his word will not be blasphemed. This afternoon, I want to tell you that motherhood is a high and noble calling. Amen. It is a high and noble calling because, you know, when you think about it, that God in heaven will share his creation and the, the power of creating humans with you. What do I mean by saying that? I mean that for God in heaven to share with you the procreation of man with a woman and place, makes the child and places the child in your womb and tells you to keep it and watch over it for nine months and he leads you to birth it. I believe that that is the number one reason why I say that motherhood is a noble calling. And so... The re second reason why motherhood is a noble calling is of also the fact that apart from the fact that you carry that which has placed in your womb for these number of, of months, 
Apart from that, what God also does is that he gives the mothers the first opportunity to be the first people to build a relationship with any human being that lands on planet Earth. It means that when the child lands on planet Earth, the mother is the first person the child begins to bond and begin to have a relationship with. And then in a few days from that, the father also joins in. So you and I need to understand that motherhood is not something to be underrated. For God himself to look upon us and choose us to be part, partakers of this creation. You know, God does it so beautifully. And he connects the baby with the mother through the umbilical cord. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Amen. One day is not enough to celebrate mothers. We have to celebrate it every day. Amen. Amen. Every day, we need to celebrate Mother's Day. You know, it is a, a noble calling also because of the fact that God has given you that position to shape, to mold, to train lives. That certainly is not a waste of time. Sometimes people think as a mother, they think, what am I doing as a mother? How can I even evaluate what I have done over the years? I'm telling you. And, and admonishing you and encouraging you that continue to hold on and continue to do the good work because you know what? What you are doing is not a waste of time at all. May God cause you to live long so that you will know. Your kids will grow up and then you will know that the little things you did over the years were done for a great purpose. Amen. Not only is it a noble calling, it is a place of strength. So you know what? Nobody should look at a mother and think, all they do is just mother. Because apart from the fact that it's a noble calling, it is a place of strength. It is because, you know, all the activities that a mother has to undergo in a day to be able to manage her home and to be able to manage her family. That when you put together are several careers put together. I will show you why. You know, when you look at a mother, she's a chauffeur. Isn't that somebody's job? The woman is a chef. Isn't that somebody's job is paid to be a chef? She is a nurse, whether she's been to a nursing school or not. She is a doctor, whether she's been to a, a doctor school or not, or medical school or not. She is a counselor. Somebody is paid to counsel. She is a fashion consultant. One of the children is like, come here, pull that one up. Pull that one down. So people are paid to be fashion consultants. She's an accountant because she keeps the books in the home. She is a teacher. She handles the homework whether she understands the maths or not. Amen. She's the organizer. Oh my goodness. She has all the stickers in the place. On the fridge with magnets. This one is going this way this, uh, at this that time. This one needs to be picked up at that time. This one needs to have an, uh, 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 an appointment with a GP at this time and at this particular time and she's juggling all of those things not only is it a noble call it is a place of strength it takes a strong person to be able to juggle all those things and not only that she just juggles it all as, at the same time pastor said it and i repeat it he says it is only a woman who can have a baby in one arm have that phone in the other hand and use one foot to open the door <laughs> hallelujah if that is not a place of strength, I don't know what it is. Mothering is taxing. It takes every, apart from all that I've said, I've finished. Motherhood takes every part of you. Your physical, emotional, mental, every ability that you have, from spiritual to emotional to mental, should all be applied, all those faculties in your mothering. And so this afternoon, I want to tell you, that if, for example, you are at home or you're at home and you are a full-time mother, are there any full-time mothers here? No. I'm talking about mothers who have decided that for maybe 15 years of their life, up to 17 years of their life, they want to help mother their children until they are old enough to go to school and all of that before they go back to their careers. How many of you are doing that at the moment? It's a season. Amen. I want to, I want to encourage you. Now, you know what? If you're a full-time mother, sometimes you feel that, what do I do? Sometimes people look at you and think, you are just a mother. And sometimes you are the one that even tell people, what do you do? I am just a mother. I'm telling you this afternoon, take that word just out of it. Because you know, you are not just a mother. 
You are not just a mother. Somebody said this. Uh, when they were asked, what do you do? The, woman, the person said this. I am a research associate in the field of child development and human relations. Hallelujah. Don't say you are just, don't put that word out. Because you know what? The things you do are so much that you can't just say just about them. Amen. You are not just a mother. You know, the good thing about it is that sometimes some of these mothers have sacrificed their own ambitions so that they'll be able to do that. May the Lord bless you. The world will look at you and say, you are just a mother. But God looks at it and says, this is an honorable sacrifice. Amen. But some of us, we have juggled the two. Some of us who are career women, so we have our career and then we are mothering on the side. God bless you. It is not easy to balance work and home. Mothers know what I'm talking about. But you know what? In the midst of that, I pray that God will grant us the wisdom to be able to balance it all well to his glory. Because the one thing that most career women who have also children will tell you is that, yes, it's good to work, but you know what? They wish they were at home. Because every working mother will tell you that they feel guilty at some point in their lives, that they were not there for their children at certain crucial moments in their lives. And so Lord, grant us that grace that we'll be able to juggle it all to the glory of his name. Listen to me. Unfortunately, some husbands don't understand it either. And if their wives are at home being full-time mothers, they look at them, they come at the end of the day and say, what did you do? What did you do? The whole day you say did the whole day. What did you do? <laughs> you and I know that full-time mothers do a lot. There's a, a group called salary.com and they said that, you know, you cannot really quantify how much a mother is worth, a full-time mother. He says even 100,000 uh, pounds per annum is not even enough to quantify it because some of the things I've said are things you can't even put any money to. It. Amen. May God grant us that grace to be able to mother. See, sometimes we mothers ourselves don't feel any sense of greatness. And I think it's all because of our culture. Sometimes we don't sit down to evaluate what mothers mean and what they, their value really is. My mission today, and I've told you simply, that if I said nothing at all, I want you to get this clear. That you know what? What you are doing is valuable in the sight of God. Amen. Don't think for a moment that what you are doing has no value. Don't underrate it because money can't buy it. You know, sometimes it's very difficult to, to measure things that are done, little pieces of things that are done daily. But you know what? It all goes to the bigger picture of what God has in store for your child. So keep going on. Keep going on. Amen. And so if what we are doing is of value to the Lord, let's continue to do it. So that the parents and the things that we do today will create for us and for our children good memories for their tomorrow. They will look back and they will thank God for the mothers and the fathers that they had. This morning when Pastor Moses asked us to pray for, for mothers, I stood there and I prayed for my mother. Even though she's gone about 10 years, 12 years ago. But I thank God. You know, there are moments when I just thank God for the home that he brought me through. You know, they are gone. The two of them are gone. But I constantly thank God for the lives of my mother and for my father. I do know, certainly, that I couldn't have had a better father. I could not, never, have had a better mom. And so this morning, if for some reason, the relationship between you and your mother is not that good, you know what? From here, we need to take steps backwards. Go look for them and make it right. Amen. Hallelujah. So today, if your children are at home, I want to encourage you, make the most of it. Make the most of it in loving them while they're at home. If they're grown enough and they're, they're out of home, they've left home as well, still continue the good relationship. Because it said, and the lady told us in that video, that a mother's work never gets done. So our verse in Titus 2, 4, Women, older women, teach the young women to love their children. Why is it it's so important to love our husbands and to love our children? You know, the first thing that I've said here, that loving our children is God's heartbeat. 
It is God's heartbeat because the Lord himself said it for us in Matthew 18 verse 5. Jesus said this. He says, and whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. Jesus had picked up a little child and put the child on his laps. It says, whoever welcomes a little child like this in my name welcomes me. And so on this occasion, we also like to say a thank you to the Kingdom Kids teachers. Amen? Let's put our hands together for them. Amen. Sunday after Sunday, they are teaching, they are nurturing, they are mothering, they are fathering. Because their fathers there, their mothers there are children. God bless you. The second reason why loving our children is so important is that loving relationships is the way to the heart of our children. A preacher called Tony Evans says this. He says, rules without relationships is rebellion. He means this, that if you don't have a relationship with your children, how can you start ruling them? How can you start giving them rules and instructions and all of that for life? They won't listen. Love is the basis. Love is the key to mentoring and to training and to discipling our children for the Lord. The home, the husband, the children must be the center of a Christian woman's world. So if you're a Christian woman and you're busy about everything except your home, there is trouble. And we need to sit down and think. You could be busy, but you know, what about your home? Sometimes we could be doing all the running around and we could be leaving our home, our families, our children, and our husbands behind in the rat race. Let's understand that the home, the husband, the children must be the center of our Christian world. Now, I want to describe a mother's love to you this afternoon. The mother's love is unconditional. Unconditional because it is a kind of love that doesn't love just because the child did right all the time. It is a kind of love that even though we do not approve of all the things that our children may do, we still love them anyway. That is the basis of the love. You know, so sometimes when a child doesn't fall into line it is a challenging thing for the parents to just keep loving keep loving and my always my uh, admonition to people who are going through those challenging times as parents i kept saying to them just keep loving them keep loving them keep doing these unconditional things and you know what it is by doing that as we continue to do that you know that the child somehow falls back into line sometimes this love is demonstrated We love the children so much that sometimes it has to be demonstrated in disciplining them. And then sometimes, at other times as well, they are demonstrated also through patience. No, psychologists have always always said that romantic love and maternal love are always processed in the same section of the brain. What they are saying is that when you see somebody that you love, your husband, your wife, or your fiancés, or courting, That part of the brain that is stimulated is the same part of the brain that is stimulated when a child, a mother sees their child or or son or daughter. That is the kind of love a mother's love is. It's profound. When I found out, wow. You see, fathers have a different kind of love. And today we're not talking about fathers, but just a, a, a point in passing. That father's love is is of a different dimension as as well. God gives it in all the diversity for the beauty of the family. I remember when I was leaving, when I was going to get married, my dad called me, put his hands on me and said, I give you my blessing as a father. And he said that whether I live or I die, my blessing goes with you. A father's blessing, you can never toy with it. And so even though it's Mother's Day today, if there are problems with you and your father, I pray you take steps back to your father and make it, make it work. Amen. It is unconditional. A mother's love is unconditional. And I've explained to you what psychologists have said. Now, the practical workings of the mother's love is that one of the things that mothers do well is that mother's love is a love that prays. Mothers are good at praying, and fathers as well, praying for their children. You know, a lot of the, a lot, for many of us, a lot of the breakthroughs that we have, a lot of the open doors and favor that we have, 
is due to the fact that we have a praying mother somewhere. And you should not toy with it. The uh, legacy of the praying mother. And we have a lot of trans, uh, uh, credits transferred to us because mothers prayed. A mother's love is selfless. And because it is selfless, it sacrifices. You know, unless we are selfless, I'm telling you, we cannot sacrifice. You know, a mother doesn't really set out to say, I am sacrificing for my family. Most times, you will never even hear your mom say, I am sacrificing for you. Most times, they are just selfless in themselves. And that selflessness translates to sacrificing. And you know, they will sacrifice and they don't even know they are sacrificing. Sometimes they will sacrifice to the point where the children will tell them it is enough because they don't even realize that they are sacrificing. They are selfless. I pray that God will make us selfless mothers. You know, a teacher once asked a question in class. He says, suppose it's a maths, maths lesson and in that maths lesson, the teacher wanted to make it as practical as possible. And so the teacher said, Suppose you are a family of seven, and your mom has baked a cake. Family of seven, father, mother, and five children. What fraction would you get as one of them in the, in the family? So a child raised their hand up, and she said, Teacher, I would get one-sixth. And the teacher said, I've taught you fraction over and over. You don't know your fractions. The child lifted the hand again and said, Teacher, you don't know my mother. <laughs> Because, you know, my mother will say, I'm not having any cake. And he will share it for the six of them. That is how selfless mothers are. She's the one who sacrifices her night's sleep for the sake of her sick children. We said this afternoon that when children rise up in the night and knock on the door of the, of the, of the parents, most times the fathers don't even hear. Most times a father don't even hear the first cough in the middle. I'm telling you, it is in the middle of the night. It is not as though you are having a sleepless night. You are deeply asleep. But you hear a first cough. You jump to your feet like the Lord lifted you like that. You will do that. You will go downstairs, get some paracetamol, get water. The rest, I will not add it. That is mothers for you. The one who knows what to prescribe at what time. Some mothers will even sell their clothes. That their children will have the best. Amen. The mother's love is the love that is busy at home. When you go read through verse 31 again. That woman is busy from morning till night. God has given her that grace. The Bible describes her as the woman who watches over the household. The affairs of her household. The mother is the one that loves her household so much that she is the one that watches over the affairs. And I was saying to, to the young ladies this morning in the first service that start practicing to be a mother. Don't wait till you stand here. Then you know, oh, the chapter of being a mother has started. Start way before. When you have the opportunity to mother your siblings, younger siblings, do that. When you have an opportunity to be the chef for a day in the home, whatever, do it. You know, when you have, you know, clean your house. They have timetables for cleaning your rooms. You know, work out. I was saying that, you know, exercise rising up early and going. <laughs> exercise it. Rising up early. Because, you know, for this moment, you may not have so much responsibility to rise up so early like your mother does. But some days when your mother rises up early, you rise up early as well. It's an exercise so that when the day comes, you will not be practicing what it means to rise up early. Because you know, you are a mother in the making. So learn everything you need to learn as a mother would do. Fourthly, a love, it's a love that encourages. A mother's love is like fuel that enables the child to do the impossible. Let, let everybody say whatever negative thing about your child. If the mother can stand and talk to the child and encourage the child that you can do it, I can see a good future for you. I can see you walk into your destiny. I can see that you will make it. Let teachers say what they will say. 
We use the example of Carson, who is one of the best surgeons in, in Houston. When he was a little boy, the teacher said he has no brains. He, can, he will not amount to anything because the guy, he thought that the guy was so dumb. I'm telling you today, in his book, he talks about his mother who kept encouraging him. Today, he's one of the best surgeons in the United States of America. Encourage them, encourage them, encourage them. It is a love that stands with their children in the most difficult times. Don't settle for anything less than where your faith will take you concerning your child. Believe God and you know where you, you have to have a, some kind of uh, vision for your child, where you want to see that child. Don't settle for anything less until you see that come to pass in the name of Jesus. Stand with your child in the most difficult times. To stand with your child means that you are there for them at all costs. It means that you are giving them emotional support. It means that you are with them through the thick and through the thin. Amen. Scripture tells us in Matthew chapter 26 verse 20, 56. Matthew 26 verse 56. After Jesus' crucifixion, it describes this. And it says that all the disciples forsook him and fled. Some fled after Jesus had been crucified. And then it goes on in that same verse. It says, now there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother. After saying all of those things, uh, the nails pierced hands, they gave him vinegar, they did all of those things. Scripture didn't forget to leave this point that everybody went, but yet his mother stood by the cross. Maybe you and I would have, would have, been, would have collapsed with all the events that, that led to the crucifixion of Jesus. And if you've watched the passion of the Christ, you know what You've got a vivid exp expression of what it meant. And Jesus' mother was in the background all the time, watching from step to step. She stood. She walked through that journey with, a, with his son. And at the cross, she stood there. I want to encourage you, mothers, that if you're going through any difficult situations at this moment with your children, it, matter, it doesn't matter whatever situation is, it is. I want to encourage you to stand. Keep standing. Keep standing because you know what? There is a resurrection coming. There will be a resurrection of everything that you have said, everything that you have prayed, everything that you have uttered about your child. Stand and don't give up. And lastly, a love. A mother's love is overprotective at times. Oh yeah, sometimes we know that we are a little bit too much. I know it because sometimes I've been told that I'm talking too much. Who, what mother doesn't talk too much? Um, hey, hey, is there anybody? You see, oh, look, that, that is one of our credentials. And the reason why we talk too much is because of the nature of our love. That love that we have is an overprotective kind of love. It is said that a mother's love is typically so much to do with their children's safety and security. And so if a mother talks too much, it's not because she just wants to talk too much. It's because they want to make sure that you make the right choices in life. And so next time your mom talks, say, I understand, mom. <laughs> Amen. Let's love our children. If, if, you know, love is what is required of us, loving our children is so important that it is stated here in Scripture for us to learn, then you and I need to take everything we need to learn to be able to love our children. You know what? We love our children, don't we? It's almost like a... What mother would not love their child? All that we are studying here is this. Sometimes women accuse their husbands of not loving them. The husband look at them and say, what do you mean? If I didn't love you, would I have married you? <laughs> and this saga goes on and on and on. You should know I love you. That's why of all the how many women I chose you. So how could you tell me? And all the women are usually saying is that, you know, do something. Do something, express it. That is it. Amen. And so in the same way that women, we want to see our husbands express that love in different ways, we need to also not take for granted for the fact that our children also need for us to express that love in various ways. Express the five languages to our children. Affirmation, when they do well, congratulate them. They cooked for you while you were tired. Say, thank you. You know, don't say, ah, oh, this doesn't tasteless. <laughs> if
if it is taste, let's show them how they could make it taste a little bit better. So next time they know. Acts of service. Sometimes do things with them. Bake cakes with them. Do things for them. Gifts here and there. Physical, sometimes hugging. You know, talking to them, listening and giving eye contact. Let's not underrate the value of mothers. If you forgot anything today, I want you to go out of here confident as a mother that God has placed in your hands a, 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 an honorable role and task. And he's partnering with you. He has given you somebody to look after. Assignment, uh, uh, um, submission date is coming soon. And what I mean by assignment, submission date is this, that very soon they will leave your roof. That is why I'm telling you, make the most of today while they are under your roof. If they have left, still love them. Still find ways of loving them. This morning, I want to encourage you. Mothers who are waiting mothers, that as we pray through this year, that God himself will be true to you. That you will have a child on your laps as well. Amen. We want to salute single mothers who do it single-handedly. We want, to th- we want to say to you, you know what? Don't underrate those little things you do. Because it's said that little drops of water makes a mighty ocean. You may not see the progress now. But you know, as the clock goes, you know, you never see the hand of the clock move. But you know one thing. After you've looked away and you've come back again, it has moved. So you know what? Just as the clocks, the hands of the clock move, as you nurture your children, see that you are doing something. Some years to come, you will look back and you will thank God for the grace that he has given unto us. Wouldn't it be a blessing that in our old age, we can look back with joy with the relationships that the Lord has given us through our children. Don't let them leave home. Sometimes we we forget that there is coming a time where they will leave. Don't let them leave home before we look back and think, oh, we could have done it better. May God grant us many fruitful years We make mistakes as parents, you know, and God knows that we make mistakes as parents. I always say that when you have a child, it doesn't really come with a manual of what to do and what not to do. You know, so sometimes we make mistakes as parents. But on the whole, if we are doing the right thing, I can guarantee you that the work you are doing will not be in vain. May the seeds that you are planting, may it be watered daily by the Lord. May you see the fruit of your hand. May God bless you on this Mother's Day. Amen. We search for you, Jesus, in a dry and barren land. We're longing for your hand to guide us to a place where you can cleanse us with your rain baptize us once again we thirst for you oh yeah we thirst for you we search for you jesus in a dry and barren land we're longing for your hand to guide us to a place where you can cleanse us can cleanse us with your rain baptize us once again with us for you Oh Lord, we are waiting, let your river flow, come flood our hearts again, quench our thirsty souls, oh Lord, we are waiting, let your river flow, come flood our hearts again. Quench our thirsty souls. We thirst for you, oh yeah, yeah. We search for you, oh. In a dry and barren land, we're longing for your hand to guide us to a place. 
place where you, Jesus, can cleanse can us cleanse with your baptize us once again. With us for you, Dada. With us for you. With us for you. Oh, with us for you. Last time, with us for you.